Welcome back everybody to a very sad and exciting episode of the Movie Social. We are your hosts, Ricky and Stefan. Today's episode, it's finally happened. We are at the end of season one for Snowpiercer. We're going to be talking about episode nine and ten since there was a two hour final. But before we get into that, don't forget to always like and subscribe if you like the channel, if you like the video. And then don't forget to uh, turn on those notifications and definitely let us know what you guys thought about that final episode or the final two episodes in the comments below. And so, man, what a start to the final episodes of uh, season one for Snowpiercer. Yeah, I mean, everything we looked for that we were asking questions during season one got came, answered. You got answered. Mm -hmm. It came, all, all came to a head. And um, if you ask me, it just climaxed each episode. Yeah. And honestly, I like how with Snowpiercer, it wasn't a wild gap in time for each episode. Like, okay, this happened in this day. episode. Yeah. All right, it's happening now, next day, or maybe two days later, depending on what was going on in that previous episode. But so with the final two episodes, we pick up right at where we left off with them fighting. For the train, mm -hmm. they've now secured third third class cars. They've secured a little bit more than third class, including the food supplies, basically. Mm -hmm. And now the first class and all is talking their options of killing everybody back there, guessing, not caring who's back there. That's not for the, all of this. Who is for all of this? Just kill them all. Which is kind of crazy. And you see, I see, you can even see some people in first class was looking like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, had the, you had you had the person, you had the guy who was basically remember he snitched about some renovations or a couple of episodes ago. Yeah. Oh, he, he was all for getting them out of he here. Pulled, he pulled. He, he slid in a burner. Like, what's going on? They all. Was going <laughs> he was slid. He gonna slide this the school teacher the burner. Like, what's going on? They all was in on it. So, uh. It, it, they, all right, so we stuck a little bit ahead of ourselves for one moment with that one. So, all right, we get to the point where they uh, basically told them, told third class and everybody else, you lay, you lay down, take the fall for everybody else, you die, we kill you instantly, everybody else lays down their weapons, they get to live. Maybe possibly better lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I don't see that happening. Clean sheets, I don't see that happening. Better food, I don't see that happening at all. But at that very moment late was about to lay himself down like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna give up, give in. Who comes in? Free. Before you get to that, right? Let's just jump back a little bit. Yeah, we I mean we reach back to how she got we, free and all. No, not even that. The reason why he was about to leave his life on because he was just about to go all in. Oh, yeah, he was. Like, but one of the things that we talked about, and I was right, I like Mark for me, that's his baby. Yeah. That's his baby. So that's actually why he was just going to lay down. I mean, that and the fact of extra lives being possibly lost. He yeah. didn't want to risk too many lives. I mean, he knows there's going to be characters. But he don't want to risk unnecessary loss with those that aren't going to be in the fight at all. Yeah. So that's one of the main reasons. And then you know But then the opportunity came about. Melanie somehow gets free. Well, I'm not gonna say somehow. You definitely she had some loyalists with her yeah, still loyalty people. That got her free because the person that was going to uh, writing down the names for the executions. She, she's a loyalist. Well, I, she gave her some time by saying, oh yeah, we need to get some identification on this person before they go to the next person. Then the executioner gets her free, gets her out of there. So and just to talk about that for just like a brief second. Go ahead right on ahead. Because I want to not be in that execution style. Exactly. That is, mm. that is ridiculous. They make you breathe in the cold air. It's called what, frozen lump or something yep, like that? Yeah, frozen lumps. Death by frozen lumps. They make you breathe in the air from huh? the outside. You think smoking is bad? <laughs> smoking don't kill you this fast. I mean, jeez. You breathe in the uh, 130 something 
degrees negative Celsius. All you see is the whole face go white and then the eyes. Yeah, that's, 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 I mean, it's quick. Take, take my arm. I'm not say it's not pain, pain take my arm. It's, it's quick though. Nah, but you, you know, that's got extremely painful. Yeah, it definitely has to be painful. Okay, basically you're breathing in basically like took this while ice shards essentially. Yeah, it's wild. But yeah, that, that was wild. So now we can go ahead and get back to yeah, our show. So, yeah, Melanie tries to escape. Everywhere she turns though, there's guards, so she tries to go under the train. Guards under there. But, uh, yeah, you got guards one way, then you go this way. What do you run into? The resistance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, luckily, the resistance is nice enough not to just kill you on sight like the guards probably would have done in Halloween. Mm-hmm. She escaped through the vent. Yep. I mean, it's a good thing she knew the train could in and out, or yeah. else, uh, yeah, she'd have been caught. Cool. Like but then she gets, they take her to Layton. Layton is like, okay, um, he kind of wants to kill her too. But she has one thing that up her sleeve left. One last card. I'll help you get the train. I'll get you the engine. You know, they don't really fully believe her, but still, she still says she'll lay, lay it down. He has control of the train. She doesn't. He goes with it. They devise their plan. Make it look like he's going to turn himself in. But, oh gosh. That was the best. This is one of the better parts. While they're back there devising their plan to basically fake himself turning himself in, they send uh, Mr. Mustache, as I'm going to call him for the rest of these episodes. Because I really don't like him for no other reason. He always plays this kind of uh, slimy guy and everything, even on Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> but yeah, Mr. Mustache goes up to the front, let them know. Yeah, he said he'll turn himself in. Lay himself down so nobody else can die. Little do we know, there's uh, stuff running the foot up in the first class as well. Part of this whole plan, as we alluded earlier. The gun gets past the school teacher. The daughter, I don't know if she 100% knew or didn't fully know. I don't think she knew. I think no. she was, was basically trying to make her parents get her parents in power. See, I'm going I'm to play devil's advocate here for a second. She knew for the fact that she wanted her parents gone so she can get the place to herself, have freedom to do completely in control of her own self, no parents, no, no ruling. Well, that, that, but that she didn't know because then she didn't. At the same time, that backfire. But we'll, we'll get further into that. But yeah, so uh, you know, those uh, dictators up in first class wanted to go down there, of course, to see, watch. I'm surprised though that uh, what's her name didn't go. So at this point, I'm, I'm tired of her name. Miss Hospitality. Oh, Ruth. Yes. I, I really hate the name. I, I, I hate I'm going to pause for one second. Can we stop, Snowpiercer? Stop zooming in on the lips with the cameras. Her lips are so thin. It looks like paper. You, you know the Oreo thins? Yeah. Yeah, that's how thin. I mean, she can't help it, that's her real lips, but. But it's hilarious. Her voice. Ah, man. It's, it reminds me of. Her character itself is the equivalent of Dolores Umbridge on Harry Potter to me. I know you don't watch, you've never seen Harry Potter, but that's how her character portrays to me. Okay, you find out that, yeah, you've been lied to by Melanie this whole time, and now all of a sudden you have so much anger and hostility in you that you want to have Melanie killed or that you want to kill yourself. But that's not you. That's not even in you. You don't have that in you to do. And then you want to act like you big shot and doing all this. But the whole time, before you was Mrs. Pushel. I mean, everybody has their pushing points and breaking points, but yeah, no. Let's stop that. So, it's probably she didn't, Ruth doesn't go to the front with her, put them all to get, uh, grab Lee. But, you know. So, yeah, uh, planning was afoot. They bring uh, Layton in here. 
they all, and it's ironic that they all meet inside the uh, classroom. The, the classroom car for train. Mm -hmm. And what was really wild to me is something that I, I can see uh, this government doing. Let's say I have a photo shoot with the uh, prisoner who's going to be executed. Let's uh, sign, I understand signing the treaty and all. But, oh, we're going to have a photo op moment. No, why? Like, really? How did you feel on that part? I didn't care, because I already knew what was going on. I was just like, listen, I let's, let's, let's get the show on the road. Like, really, are y'all really doing this? But, see, Tom was against them, too, because the plan was exactly. to decouple the train for seven cars and then reconnect the train after they pass through the... Uh, Junction where uh, the track splits. So Tom was already against them on that part. You know, they was like, okay, can we uh, split this on up, player? Got other things to do. We want to get this train back in operation. Of course, the uh, first class uh, dignitaries who want to think they're going to be running this show, like, uh, okay, okay, we'll stay here. We want to make sure we uh, be the face that everybody sees down there in third class. They felt that bad at a minute. Okay, so they take laying down below. Ah, man, that was a good plan. Having the gun waiting down there. I know they didn't anticipate the extra guards down there with them, but it was looking nice for a second there. It was. Like Layton the, the, got the upper hand for a second, and then what happens? They lose the control. Because they're outnumbered, what, three to two? Three or four to two? Yeah, it's like that. Five, five to two, I think. So now they had the two guards holding lane. You had the uh, main guy, and then you had. So it was, uh, it was like either four to two or five to two, something like that. But yeah, and then lo and behold, you get the uh, the people who wanted the captains the first first yeah. episode. Yep, the guys from the drawer from the tail. Well, actually, all three from the tail came down there because mm -hmm. they did get out, and they were wandering around below the train for a while. Luckily, they came along when they did. They get the upper hand completely. Knock out them. Lady tells them they gotta hurry up and get up for, as far as they can up car, up train, I'm sorry. And then Layton goes up to decouple the other half. But, ah oh man, this was, this was the moment that had me nervous for a while. Yeah, it did, I agree. Layton winds up seeing the uh, Prison. prisoners that were bound to be executed goes and knocks out the guard after thinking about it for a while. Knocks out the guard. He's only got seconds seen. left yeah. here. Tries to see if he can get them free, but they're all chained. Nobody, no, no the guard doesn't have the key. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out where the hell was the key at? Like, where the so Somebody else probably had the key. So, says he's sorry. He's sorry to everybody. It was a sad moment, but he had to do what he had to do for the greater good of the train. Decouples their car. They all just float off into the abyss. One thing I did wish they did show a little bit more of was after they got separated. Oh, what happened to the car? Yeah, like I would have would have liked to see like did it as it freeze, did it derail, any of that. Makes sense. They eventually retached the cars and then basically that's just about the end of that episode of episode nine. And then we had on to whew, the Whopper of the episodes, episode 10. Yeah, so episode 10 was pretty deep. It wasn't action packed. It was more laying down the fruits and the seeds of season two for sure. Yeah, I mean, the end had a little bit of action. Yeah, it had a little bit of this, this early moments. So two, so episode 10, you know, they're trying to basically start their democracy, mm -hmm. um, you know, and whew. little council and stuff like that. I mean, you know, it was reminiscent of uh, us as black folks trying to get uh, the rights and justice that we deserve in the United States here with uh, Tell and Third Class. Yeah, it, it, it was reminiscent of just, you know, just getting, get, getting like your fair equal share just about any part of history. Think about it. Yeah. So they go ahead, you know, it basically, like, this was a lot, a lot of dialogue. So then the guy in the engineer room. He see, he, yeah, he, he I see swear, something. 
he, he had me thinking for a while. That he was working for him? Of course, mm -hmm. I can, yeah. So he sees a blip on the, on the, uh, on the screen there. And he's not sure exactly what it is. He knows exactly what it is. So he basically like kills the feed. Mm -hmm. Knocks out the satellite while the other guy's hearing the music. Yeah, he had the music going. Well, yeah, that's down that down car or something. No, no, no. This is different. Mm -hmm. So that's the way he was acting. So in the meanwhile, um, I forget her name. Who is Melanie? Melanie. Yeah. Melanie visits the, uh, I don't even know what kind of room to call it. Oh, you talking the about the let go. Uh, the, uh, we're running third class. Yeah. I'm just gonna call it the let go of mode because you feel it, you feel the soul and call. all that stuff. I know there's an extra name for it, but she and she's like she feels bad about what happened with her daughter and all that process. Um So she goes back up car, they tell her about what's going on. She says, Let's talk to Layton. Layton says if there's a survivor, she let's slow down. So they start the whole but process. You, but you know, uh he didn't want Layton involved at all. He no. didn't want yeah. it to be known. And mind you all, with all this happening, there had to go into Chicago, which will create, complete another revolution around the world. The market is year seven, I believe. Yep. That they've been traveling on this train. So it was a big moment for everybody, too, at this point. Mm -hmm. So as that occurs, you know, you still have the people who are. Uh, iffy, like you know, like you <laughs> call it speed to speed. She don't think that this whole revolution, this whole democracy thing is gonna work. I don't know. She doesn't even like to tell. Let's be yeah. honest. She doesn't like. Them. She thinks she's uh, above them and all that stuff. So she no thinks she's way. first class. But she's so not first class. So after you know, after the whole you know debacle, the they see the car. Like they see, it. they see that judge on got a W on. Well, for the industry. And they're like, whoa, whoa, what's going on in the roof? Uh, she she comes in her panties. I'm gonna say it like that. I'm sorry, Judge. She comes in her panties. Oh my God, Mr. Wilson! Yo, she act like he's the savior. Yeah. Like, she acts like he's Jesus God. Christ, yeah. the Holy Grail, everything. Like, yeah. no, it's just another yeah. human being. He's here to save us. So essentially, what happens is that car that they have is a prototype that they had. A supply supply, area. supply car. Supply cars, and it has forty cars yeah. and he's trying to get us he's trying to get on here like listen let me take back my drink and uh during this process they like listen we gotta get this oh yeah get him off of here well well, well they, what happens, they, to they try to out they try to outrun him yeah. because first of all there's a section where it, the tracks are going to join yeah they want to first beat him to it so that way he can't derail them anything like that and they want to get ahead of him. Get ahead but of him, but they get ahead, but not by much. No. He can, I, and I'm trying to start to figure out what's in this other car that he was able to speed up and catch up to them because not only they had that. a car's length ahead of him, and then he caught up, and then that thing just went into a transformer mode. Not that. That is what blew my mind. The front of the train and it hooks on the back of the train. Like a, it looked like something like a hand. Like get your ass over here <laughs> and. Latched onto it so it wouldn't like pull away, which was and dope. what I was wondering at this point, at this very moment, when it latched on, why didn't they just grab everybody from the tail and detach that car, and that one car? Because then you can't latch back on to it because true. that one car is gone. True, they could have that, but I, I don't know for whatever reason, I don't know what if there's something in the tail that they personally need to get. Or what, what not, but I know a few moments later they start hacking. Wilford's car starts hacking into the uh train, yeah, to, to slow it down, to actually yeah. slow it down. And I mean, also take control, yeah, right. take control of everything. So I don't know at, once he started hacking in, they lost the ability to be able to do that to decouple the train. That's probably exactly what well, it was. the car, but. And we start seeing everybody getting all anxious and excited, some happy to see what's going on, some well, yeah, not. Melanie at the top trying to still detach everything. Yeah, she climbs up into the suit and goes above the train. But before she does that, her little boyfriend in the engine room finally admits that he knew what was going on beforehand. Mm -hmm. Alright, so yeah, he de she detaches his uh, oxygen mask and then uh, she goes solo dolo. Yep, on top. Now she attaches herself to the top. 
because they got a little joint that they can move from car to car. But she, once she gets her bond, she, she's like, uh, this. I yeah, she herself. Herself. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Why? Why did you do that? Foreshadowing, by the way. Yes, very foreshadowing. And she starts trying to run. She falls. She gets back but up. She gets back up. Then she runs and jumps the, to the next car and almost falls all the way off the train. Yeah, but what happened was, what made, she actually it does end up falling because Once they, the train comes to yeah, they, they, stop. they, they uh, Mr. Wilford's train, supply car train, uh, forces like, it to, shuts the brakes, like, it activates yeah. the brakes so it can just stop. And at this point, I thought she Wilford's died my car heart. comes all the way through, well, because they're using the torch to cut through the back of the tail. To open up that hatch mm -hmm. because I'm guessing it was frozen solid from the outside. Yeah. But the, before you before you actually start that, you have well, your, you have like, your girl Ruth. Yeah, Bring the kids up here to sing it. the joyous songs of Wilford Industries train as a hospitality guest introduction. Terrible. And oh, you had to have a. Uh, Layton and everybody go meet her at the front of the uh, tail. Like, oh, Ruth, what are you doing here? You and these kids need to go. Mm -hmm. Ruth pulls out the gun. Like, Ruth, you, you're just beside yourself this episode. You need to take a chill pill, take some other Xanax. I wonder how she would feel if somebody just put stabbed her right in there. I mean, I don't think they want to do that with the kids. Right That's there. exactly That's what I'm saying. Thing. But if she didn't have the kids, would they have stabbed her? Oh yeah, no, without a doubt, somebody would kill Ruth. And then they Lady was like, "Okay, okay, we're going. Let's settle down, calm it down, put the gun away." That's get. Yeah, he, he lets her do her thing. We go up to the front. Hey, Ruth, you're gonna be right beside me. I think. Personally, I thought he was gonna be like, "Listen, Ruth, you're gonna just get tossed out there. <laughs> if it ain't Miss Wilford, we toss you who out." So they finally open the hatch, and the big reveal. Ah, <sighs> Melanie's daughter survives. She's on the train. Older now. Yeah, teenager, I think, or at least a little bit older than maybe. Ladies down the law, Wilfer said, this is his train now. Either you guys got 13 minutes to, to comply and hand over the train to him, or you all gonna freeze to death because the train stopped running so it can't generate heat or electricity. Yep, and then at the time you see Melanie, uh, I'm not gonna say waking up because she didn't fall and like hit her head. And yeah, I mean, no sense of snow, but she, yeah. when, the way they showed it, it was so much wind and yeah. Dirt and all but that. And then I didn't realize how, how far she back, was back from the end. But see, she's not that far. She's not real far back from it because you got to look at it. Also, it, she was showing the other train too. Yeah. Wolford's train connected to it. It just seemed like, yo, it just seemed like too far. One thing they did show to me how tall those trains were. Yeah. We were talking about it before of how they was able to fit all this stuff in those trains. Them trains is like three times the height of a regular. Uh, those cross train, country train. Those oh, trains. Like, yeah. So I could honestly say. So right now, I look at the second floor. The train was probably as high from the from the ground floor of my apartment building. So probably like there, you know, sit there. Maybe, but they they were pretty dead ones all. I I'm gonna say like three stories tall. It seems it seems feasible. Which is kind of huge for a train, if you ask me. Maybe oh, maybe a little taller than that. Definitely huge. Definitely definitely. And y'all really couldn't handle double deckers to fit everybody in there. But I mean, now that we got the below deck, well, the under part where they travel for speed and all that, getting stuff back and forth. But yeah, yeah they can add it uh, up a deck and all that. But we I, get to see at the very end. I just cannot wait. Mr. Warford steps on to the train as well as he gets ready to go off. Well, I mean, technically, it actually didn't go it off. It did go off. But it's just a little it snippet clips. of some things that, that... So that tells me that season two was already recorded. Parts, probably. Yeah, maybe Parts, the first half. Partially. Yeah, maybe the first half. But, uh... But I, I, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Are there's we going so to get a winner of season TNT? You, there's so many things that you're going to answer. Like, I thought Wilford was dead. Apparently, he's not dead. Yeah, I thought like, Wilford was dead. I thought her daughter was exactly. dead. I thought a lot of people... But I didn't take a train. Who's all on this new train? That's another question. And looking at the clips from the trailer, you can see Layton is locked up. Yep. Again, something like that. Back to where he started. You 
you can see Melanie might survive this. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of things happening. You still see more fighting and riding, getting ready to prepare. Because uh, the way it looks to me, the tail is back in the tail again. Mm -hmm. It's literally going to be the people who side with Melanie and um, Lathan versus Ruth, Mr. Wilford, and all the people he probably got on that other train. But I'm going to say this. I really don't think Ruth is going to last too much longer in season two. I honestly thought Melanie was about to go at the end of this one. I was about to be like, no, my predictions is wrong. Melanie does not survive season one. But she survived, thank God. Oh no, man, great series, uh, uh, season, great season. Uh, I'll clap it up for you. I but uh, for season two. I definitely can't wait for season two. Whenever we get the news that that's dropping. Um, we might do a reaction video of the trailer. Uh, watching the trailer, we might do something like that. But um, yeah. Um, I can't wait. I'm excited. Great, great, great things coming for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, show. So, did you guys uh, enjoy season one? Did you like it? Let us know what you thought in the comments below. How are you? Excited are you for uh, season two? Did you enjoy that trailer? A little teaser? I mean, it's got me wanting more already. But thanks, guys. Until next time.